Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Breakfast at the Silvers. I am starting to get a little hoarse, so you may hear my voice go in and out, but that's all. Okay. <laughs> all right. Today's devotional is called Receiving Impressions from Matthew 9, 9, follow me. And you're in Psalm 63. Okay. Yeah. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is, mm. to see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Mm. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, mm. because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me, but those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. Mm. They shall fall by the sword, they shall be a portion for foxes, foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. Mm. Such a good, good scripture. <laughs> I was actually reflecting this morning. When we had a very short, short night. But I was reflecting this morning um, when the alarm went off that uh, I was challenging myself how well or poor <laughs> i praise him in the trials mm. right mm. so just interesting that you brought up praise mm. all right people by the hundreds are continually pressing me with their difficulties with their strange yet holy and noble desires where two ways meet and they do not know which one to take some have received impressions in their minds and hearts but I want to show you what comes of impressions. A lady came to me and said, don't you know the spirit of the Lord is upon me? I have to preach the gospel. I said, there is nothing wrong in that. I want to know where I have to go to preach so I can come to you to see if the Lord has told you where I am to go. Yes, you have to begin at home, begin at Jerusalem. And if you are successful, go to Judea then if you are successful, God will send you to the uttermost parts of the world. See Acts 1.8. God is not going to send you to the uttermost parts of the world until you have been successful around Jerusalem. We have a tremendously big job. It is well worth doing. And I want to do it well. I want to tell you the difference between the right and the wrong way to discern voices and thoughts that may come into your minds. You have the scriptures and you have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has wisdom and he does not expect you to be foolish. The Holy Spirit has perfect insight into knowledge and wisdom and truth always gives you balance. You always need to have one thing removed from you, being terribly afraid. When fear leaves, power and confidence comes in its Amen. place. You also need to have another thing that must remain and that is love. Love in order to obey God rather than your inclinations to be something. But if God wants to make you someone, that is different. My wife tried her best to make me someone, but she could not do it. Her heart was right. Her love was right. She did her best to make me a preacher. She used to say, Now, Father, you could do it if you wanted to, and I want you to preach next Sunday. Just a side note there, she used to preach, right? Yeah. I think she was known for her preaching mm. um, initially before he got filled. Yes. Meaning baptized in the Holy Spirit. Mm. Yep. I did everything to get ready. I tried everything. I don't know what I did not try. It would be best not to tell you what I did try. I had as many notes as would suit a clergyman for a week. My wife's heart her love, her desires were all right. But when I got up to preach, I would give out my text and then say, 
If anyone can preach, now is your chance, for I have finished. That did not take place once, but many times. She was determined, and I was willing. When I ministered to those who had come forward to repent and receive Jesus, I would bring them right into the kingdom. I could nurse the children while my wife preached, and I was pleased to do it. But don't you know, when the Holy Spirit came, then I was ready. Then the preaching abilities were not mine, but the Lord's. It must all be for Jesus. Oh, I tell you, whatever you may think about it, the whole thing is that there is nothing good without Jesus. Anyone can jump on this platform and say, I am right. But when you have no confidence, then Jesus is all the confidence you require. God must have men and women on fire for him. God will mightily send you forth in the anointing of the Spirit, and sinners will feel convicted. But it will never be accomplished if you have it in your mind that you are going to be something. The baptism is a baptism of death, and you live only unto God. Thought for today, to be filled with the Holy Spirit is to be filled with divine equipping. Mm. That's beautiful. Yeah. I've heard this over and over again. This particular devotional? or This testimony of oh. people that had no boldness. Mm. They couldn't do anything. Yes. They were scared. Yes. And then when they got filled with the Holy Spirit, the, the scaredness was gone. The fear was gone. Yeah. And the boldness came. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> See you tomorrow.